What's up YouTube? I'm Alberta26 and today I want to talk about ARMS Warriors in this 9.0 pre-patch environment. ARMS has definitely undergone some changes, not the least of which is the loss of corruption, but furthermore the complete rework of their mastery and other miscellaneous changes to abilities and talents have noticeably changed ARMS gameplay for me. While I do intend to go over some fundamental and broad strokes on how to play the class in this new environment, this video is not intended as a guide for new players trying to learn the spec. If you're looking for something like that, I highly recommend you go read Wowhead's page, and I will put a link for that page in the description of this video. But for this video, I'll be assuming that the viewer has some fundamental knowledge of the class and how it was played pre- patch 9.0. I do want to say that I'm also just giving my opinion as a semi-casual, leaning casual player coming back to the class after having played it in Nihilotha's Mythic Raid tier, mid pushing up against high keys, and actually literally no PvP whatsoever. This is coming from a purely PvE, semi-casual, leaning casual standpoint. So what's different? Corruption is gone and with it is all the extra haste that was driving the pace of the spec during Nihilotha. In a way, this kind of brings us closer to the original class fantasy of having big, deliberate hits winding up towards a big damage window. That damage window is still intact, as Memory of Lucid Dreams and the Test of Might Azerite trait are still in play during this pre-patch. Activate Memory of Lucid Dreams, use Colossus Smash, and use as many spenders as you can in the Colossus Smash window to build yourself a big, fat Test of Might strength buff. And then, Go ham. I'm feeling the most significant difference in the downtime between these damage windows. Rage generation is not uh, happening as quickly. I'm having to choose much more deliberately when to spend and when to wait. The mastery effect for arms, Deep Wounds, has also been reworked. Certain key abilities in your rotation will still apply the Deep Wounds dot to your enemies, but the dot itself has had its damage reduced noticeably. But it has had a new effect added, where enemies who have this dot on them take an increased amount of damage from you. The percentage that your damage is increased by scales with the amount of mastery you have. This means that during the execute phase, you have to be conscious of using abilities that will keep the deep wounds debuff on your target, instead of just mashing the execute button until your enemy's health bar disappears. Cleave was also changed. It no longer has the three target requirement, but is capped at five enemies. It can also now consume the overpower effect that previously only buffed your mortal strike ability. This is go-to in Mythic Dungeons, although I'm on the fence about it replacing Sweeping Strikes. They did buff its damage though, so you are using it on cooldown. And playing around your overpower stacks can be satisfying in AoE this way. Rend had a critical damage increase component added to it. It is the go-to in a single target situation. I think this works well. You're maintaining the deep wounds dot and this dot to maximize your damage on the enemy, but it's the damage from your abilities, not the dot damage. The dots are just a means to an end. Lastly, there's been some unpruning to the class. It's mostly defensive and utility changes, but that is really where Warrior was lacking. Rotationally, they have a lot of good options, and you can make talent choices to add buttons or to take passives to keep things simple for yourself. But utility-wise, they didn't bring much, so these abilities make for a welcome addition to their toolkit. They've gotten Spell Reflect, Ignore Pain, Intervene, Shield Block, Shield Slam, Shattering Throw, and Piercing Howl. Spell Reflect is a big deal. Ignore Pain is a survivability button that costs you Rage, which will cost you damage, but if you're going to die, you won't do damage anyway, so you might rather spend some Rage on Ignore Pain. Intervene is a huge get, a big mobility advantage, and not to be taken lightly. Shield block and shield slam are for theoretically going defensive stance, throwing on a shield and trying to hold your own as a tank, if something unfortunate were to befall your actual tank. These last two abilities seem more like PvP additions. We've got shattering throw. This theoretically could play out in a PvE situation, but it'd be very niche. And piercing howl is in much the same situation where you might find use for it in PvE, but it would be pretty niche, possibly only in one dungeon for the entire expansion. But I'm sure PvPers will be happy to have these two abilities back. So where does all of this leave us? Well, the emphasis remains on the arms warrior knowing the timeline of the fight. Because you cannot generate rage as quickly as you used to, smart rage management and knowing when the big damage windows that you need to have test of might up for are coming is key. 
This was always a core component of ARMS gameplay in a raid. It's just more important than ever, especially the rage management factor. If you starve yourself on rage and you're not ready to deal damage when the boss is ready to receive it, you're going to just bottom that meter, no doubt. There are impactful talent choices to make in raids. AoE fights call for fervor of battle. In a more single target situation, you're going to want the rend. And the choice between Warbreaker and Collateral Damage is a meaningful one, although most folks seem to lean Warbreaker right now. Probably just the nature of fights in Nihilotho. We don't really have like a two target full fight duration sustained situation. We've got Skull Splitter up against War Machine in single target versus AoE situations respectively. But, in PvE at least, in for the kill and anger management seem to be universal constants. Your major essence is pretty much a non-negotiable point. It is going to be memory of lucid dreams. Every single time, you need this in order to create those huge test of might damage windows. Shifting gears into a Mythic Plus environment, I kind of struggled to find a good pace and a cadence to my gameplay at first, and almost the whole time really. Uh, the reduction in rage generation because we have less haste was challenging to me, and Cleave replacing sweeping strikes made me feel like I'd lost an AoE button, when really if you use Cleave properly you can definitely get a lot more out of it than sweeping strikes. I was just used to that alternating pulls using Bladestorm and sweeping strikes. So having to change my gameplay it took me a minute to get settled. That said, I feel like I got there in the end and I had a good time. The future for this spec is not too bright in my opinion. We will lose the Heart of Azeroth neck and with it our major essence slot and we will lose the Azerite traits that we have on gear right now. So our test of might window is up in smoke. Unfortunately, this just leaves me feeling like there aren't any moments to look forward to in the rotation. There aren't any big, exciting moments, damage windows, nothing like that. And that's a problem because that is definitely part of this spec's fantasy, but it's just not there. Theoretically, this could be addressed by legendaries or by covenant abilities, but right now it doesn't look like it is going to be. This shift away from a really big damage window into more consistent moment-to-moment -moment gameplay it could potentially help arms out in the Mythic Plus environment, but it's definitely taken away from some of the class fantasy. I think my solution here would be to rework a talent in one of the bottom two rows. In for the kill and anger management are just default choices right now, so reworking some of those talents to be more along the lines of Memory of Lucid Dreams and Test of Might could be really effective. Deadly Calm would be really easy to repurpose to a Memory of Lucid Dreams function, and then it would just come down to choosing between Ravager or Dreadnought to rework into a Test of Might, or potentially replace Collateral Damage with a Test of Might. But I do digress. I hope you found this video informative and helpful. I would love to hear your opinions in the comments below. What do you think about my ideas for changing up the talent tree? Do you have ideas of your own? And if anybody has a PvP perspective to share, I would be glad to hear that as I have literally no experience with PvP. And with that, thank you so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit like. If you want to see more content from me, please hit subscribe and you can check out my stream at twitch.tv slash alberta26. Thanks for watching. Game on.